Hey guys, it's Matt Higgins. So if you had the chance to join my live stream this week, thank you so much for joining. I hope you really enjoyed it. If you want to see it next week, it's going to be next Tuesday again at 8 p.m. I had a really good time personally, so I think we're going to make this a thing and keep on doing it. So so getting into today's video, we are going to do something highly requested, which is all of the separatist ground vehicles. Now, just a disclaimer before we get started, this list is going to be all of the cannon vehicles and is not going to include vehicles that were specific to a certain planet, such as Umbara or Genosis. And there are two classifications for droid ground assault vehicles. These are droid piloted ground assault vehicles and droid vehicles. Droid piloted meaning, of course, that there is a battle droid piloting the vehicle and droid vehicle meaning that the actual vehicle is a droid itself. So with those out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with the droid piloted ground assault vehicles. The first vehicle on this list is a fan favorite, the Armored Assault Tank. Also known as the AAT, this repulsor lift tank was the backbone for infantry defense. This tank is armed with two lateral range finding lasers, two lateral anti-personnel lasers, six energy shell projectile launchers, and one heavy laser cannon. These tanks saw many years of action, starting with the assault on Naboo by the Trade Federation, all the way up until the Galactic Civil War, where they were transformed to accommodate organic crew members. The next vehicle on our list is a modified AAAT called the Defoliator Deployment Tank. Also called a DDT, this tank featured a defoliator missile instead of a heavy laser cannon. The defoliator missile was designed by General Locke Durd of the Separatist Alliance in order to target organic lifeforms while leaving droids unscathed. The last droid piloted vehicle was the super tank. What made this tank super was that no current weapon system could have penetrated its shields or its armor. Only prototypes of this tank were made on Geonosis, however all of them were destroyed during the second battle of Geonosis. So that is the end of our droid piloted ground vehicles. Now we're gonna move into our droid ground vehicles. Starting off, we have the DSD-1 Dwarf Spider Droid. These droids were favored as infantry support as they were lightweight, but also included a light armament. These droids could crawl into confined spaces and could even self-destruct. The next droid is the Octuptara Tri-Droid. These droids were three-legged droids that were more heavily armed than the spider droids, with three laser cannons or three missile launchers. This droid could also be armed sometimes with biological agents, thus giving it the apt nickname of the virus droid. Next up, we have the LM-432 Crab Droid. This droid was extraordinarily mobile and capable of traversing even the harshest terrains. These droids had six or four legs and carried two blaster cannons on the underside. Next, we have the IG-227 Hailfire class droid tank. The most notable feature of this tank is its two massive wheels, which it used to traverse large amounts of terrain very quickly. These tanks could easily strike fear into the hearts of any Republic opponent with its multiple missile launcher pods. Each Hailfire had a total of 30 missiles and twin chin-mounted blasters. And like many other Separatist vehicles, after the Clone Wars, these tanks fell into the hands of the Rebel Alliance. The next vehicle is simply known as the Harvester. This droid was developed to harvest plant energy from the planet Hisrich. Next up, we have the NRN99 Persuader class droid enforcer. These Techno Union tanks featured heavy repeating blasters, ion cannons, and missile launchers. These tanks were autonomous but could also work in conjunction with regular battle droids. The OG-9 homing spider droid was a four-legged droid walker. This droid featured a top-mounted laser emplacement and a bottom laser cannon. The top-mounted laser emplacement actually had a continuous fire option which would wear down deflector shields of Republic opponents. The XT Beetle transport had 20 legs and was used to transport droid units in very harsh weather conditions. Next up, we have the well-known MTT or multi-troop transport. This heavily armed transport featured two rotatable twin blaster cannons 
and droid racks capable of carrying 112 B-1 battle droids or 12 B-2 super battle droids. The next vehicle is a variant of the MTT called the Trade Federation Troop Carrier. This was a stripped down version of the MTT, removing all of the weapons but retained the exact same carrying capacity of the MTT. The Trade Federation Troop Carrier was most useful when they needed to transport a large amount of battle droids long distances in very short time frames. The Separatists also piloted multiple types of speeders. The most notable of these is the Single Trooper Aerial Platform or STAP speeder. These repulsor lift speeders featured a single battle droid pilot and an extremely light armament. However, these speeders were extraordinarily agile. Because of their light armament and high speeds, these speeders were not often used in combat, rather they were used for support and mopping up after completed missions. The Flitnot speeder was an unarmed speeder and was favored by the Separatist elite for its extremely fast speeds. The more heavily armed combat speeder featured a single pilot and was often used towards the end of the Clone Wars. These speeders even saw use by the Galactic Empire during the Imperial Era. The last vehicle is the J-1 Proton Cannon, which was an artillery cannon used by the Separatists. These artillery cannons were heavily used by the Separatists in many theaters of the Clone Wars. So that is it for this list here, guys. Make sure that if you didn't join the live stream on Tuesday that you come check it out. It's going to be Tuesday at 8 p.m. We're just going over some questions, having a discussion about Star Wars and the prequel trilogy in a more casual setting. And I had a lot of fun, so I would like to see more of you guys on the live streams. Other than that, have a great weekend, and may the Force be with you always.